Hi everybody, I'm Chuck and this is my good friend Bob from Ecuador and we're working our way through Ephesians. Bob, what are we doing today? Today we're taking a look at Ephesians 3 and verses 14 to 21. All right, let me bring up the scriptures and we'll read that for y'all. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven on earth derives its name, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of God which the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. All right. I wish I could pray like that. Uh, this is a great prayer. What what stands out to you, Bob? I think Paul has an amazing amount of compassion for the people he's working with. He, he just, we're, we're following up on a statement where he knows they've been discouraged by what he's suffering, what he's going through, and the things that he's suffered to carry the good news of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, hey, I, I know that you're maybe a little discouraged and you're worried about me, but I, I want you to know I'm praying for you that you're going to be strengthened in your inner man, that you're not going to be discouraged, that you're not going to be disanimated, that you're going to uh, have a Christ focus on your heart and not a Paul focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, one of the things that struck me is if you read the prayer very closely, Paul is really concentrating on the inner person, not just the outer person. So what are your thoughts about that? I think, um, well, like with human beings, if we're trying to change something and we change the outer appearance, but nothing's happening on the inside, it's, it's coming back. It's not, gonna, it's not gonna work. It's too much work. It's too hard. Paul understands that, you know, he can tell them to put a smile on their face and act happy, but in reality, the, the, the only place they're going to find happiness, the only place they're going to find peace in the midst of this is in Christ. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been taking this and many other passages to heart, no pun intended, but the idea of we can do all the things that make us look good on the outside. And yet, uh, Jesus often speaks to the heart. What's going on on the inside? In fact, he rebukes the fire out of the Pharisees because their insides don't match their outsides, you know. So uh, I've been working on that in taking every thought captive in order to match the external uh, with the internal and vice versa. What else sticks out to you, Bob, about this prayer? You know, he, he's praying that they would be rooted and grounded in love. Mm. And then he says the most interesting thing, I want you to completely understand that which is not understandable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in, in our humanness and in our concepts of love, we can't get anywhere close to the immense, uh, unconditional, um, unfathomable, ununderstandable love of God that mm. says even we were with sinners, Christ loved us, uh, that he loved us so much he paid a huge sacrifice it we, when we start dwelling on the love of god it puts everything back in perspective when we're looking at a world that's just falling apart 
in mm. so many ways around us. The peace point is love. Uh, it it made me think about in First Corinthians where he says the three great things: faith, hope, and love. But the greatest is love, and mm. it, the faith our faith comes from our knowledge of God's mm. love. Our hope comes from our knowledge of God's love. But he kind of says that, hey, if everybody in the entire body of Christ had a good understanding of God's love and put it all together, you still wouldn't be anywhere near how great and how big and how unimaginable it is. Yeah, I, I think that's very interesting that Paul would single out love as the primary motivator. I, I'm not disagreeing with Paul. I'm, I'm completely agreeing with him. But I think in our world, uh, you know, so many different motivations are lifted to the top and put on the pedestal, whether it's money or fame or whatever. Um, you know, the world has a different standard as far as what motivates a person. And here, you know, Paul goes after the heart not the head, even though we're, you know, he's praying that they will understand the love of God. But uh, Bob, how, how has your understanding of God's love changed over the years? Whoa. <laughs> um, because hindsight is wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and much better than going through it, you can often look back at something that seemed so difficult at the time, but then realize uh, what God was working in you out of that and how he carried you something through something or protected you from something or prepared you for something. And I think the other is you know, we're still sinners. We still mess up. We still fail. And yet God just says, come back. And he's there with those open arms and says, just ask forgiveness. And I'm, you're, you're right back in the family. It's not, mm -hmm. you're not coming back as a second class citizen. I'm not booting you out. Uh, and I just think that it's, it's so foreign. You know, we might forgive somebody a few times for doing something. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And God's just not, he's just so far beyond that. It just, there's no, I think the biggest mistake is when we try to humanize God, when we try to fathom, oh, this is how God is with my little mind, <laughs> the creator of everything yeah, that just yeah. spoke and everything came into existence. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think every day we learn something new and amazing and experience. Yeah. Um, you uh, and I both came out of pretty tumultuous childhoods, and, uh, and yet God has redeemed all of that in, in our adulthood. And, you know, he made the crooked stick right, and we're reaping the benefits of his grace as we live in Christ. And I just think about our families, you know, uh, the difference, uh, the kind of relationship that we have with our wives, with our children, with our grandchildren versus what we grew up with. It's, it's like night and day, and it's because of Jesus. But at the end of the day, uh, God's love is a billion times more than what we're experiencing here on this earth, which totally blows me away because when I think about the love that people have shown me and then I multiply that times a billion, that's where that incomprehensible part comes into play, you know, so. Yeah, I... I can't imagine uh, life or probably wouldn't be if alive if it hadn't been mm. for Christ. The uh, life of my family would have been extraordinarily different. 
Yeah. yeah. Um, and not because we deserve something, not because I'm a great guy. And <laughs> God said, wow, there's Bob. He's really a cool guy. I think I'll do something nice for him now. Yeah. 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 I, I usually in my testimony, you know, we start with the before and then we talk about Jesus and dying on the cross for our sins and, and then raising from the dead. And now he's the king. And then I talk about after. And the after it is pretty clear to me. I would have been in jail or dead, one or the other, had it not been for Jesus. But when you look at all the things that God has blessed on the backside of this, it's just purely amazing. And what awaits for us when we're with him yeah again the unknowable <laughs> yeah yeah so hopefully people that are listening hopefully you're you're feeling very loved by god uh but you're also in this tension that wow uh these guys just made it sound like this is hard to understand and it's bigger than I could imagine. And you're right. <laughs> it is much bigger than you can imagine. So any last thoughts, Bob? Yeah, if you find yourself trying to do things for God, trying to be obedient, trying to do all these things, and your motive is to please God, just know he's already pleased with you. Mm. And rest in that love and let that be the motive. It, it says that he prays that we would know the fullness of Christ in that love and that that would be the representative of the fullness of Christ to the world. Mm. The love of God that we experience and that we can share is the, is the witness to the world. Mm. And it comes out of love. And he loves you unconditionally. And so... Get back in the Word of God. If you're not familiar with it, find someone to, to lead you and help you discover and then experience every day the rest of your life more and more of that love. Mm. And I can't think of a better time in history to get in touch with the love of God. <laughs> Amen and, to that. Yeah. And so we love you. God bless you. And until next time, Keep following Jesus.